Well, hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of wyominghuntingguide.com video blog. Uh, we're two episodes in now to our do-it-yourself uh, uh, hunting uh, out here in the west, uh, more namely Wyoming. Uh, I don't know why I just keep calling it the west. I guess Wyoming is the west to me. So, I'm your host, Lucky, and uh, something I didn't mention before is I'm not a professional videographer. Uh, I'm a guy who likes to hunt and likes to share my knowledge of hunting. Uh, I don't have real high-tech uh, video equipment. I'm doing this with a $169 blog cam. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I, I don't have sophisticated equipment. I'm just wanting to shoot a little bit of information, share it with you guys, so hopefully you can come out and do this and uh, uh, enjoy your hunt while you're out here. Uh, I also do this in, in one take. There, there's no editing, there's no remixing. It, it's all done in one take. So if you'll bear with me and forgive me my flub ups and, and my, my misstatements right off the bat, uh, we'll get going on this. So um, a, little bit, a little bit of my background. I've been guiding hunters since I was 17 years old. Uh, I'm 35 years old now and nearly every year I've, I've guided hunters. Uh, since I was 17 years old. Uh, my, my first guiding experience was, was when I was 17 and uh, as I said in episode one I grew up in, in little bitty oil field towns uh, throughout the state and uh, one of the oil field towns I grew up in we, we had some amazing elk hunting right in our backyard. There was a mountain that backed up to us and it was just it was amazing and I, I lived on that mountain nine months out of the year uh, whether it was uh, big game hunting or, or bird hunting or, or trapping, I did a lot of fur trapping when I was when I was a young uh, young man uh, to put gas uh, for, to pay for, for gas for my pickup so I could go to town and, and cruise Maine and, and uh, uh, chase after the ladies. Um, uh, odd thing driving 45 miles to cruise Maine doesn't make a lot of sense, but that was my social interaction. That was my social networking uh, back in the early 90s. So. Uh, when I wasn't doing that, of course, I was up on that mountain and I was I was up there all the time and always picking up big shed antlers, always always coming home with with really good pictures of, of big elk and big deer and, and uh, my dad who also had guided non-resident hunters, um, uh, he bumped into one of his one of his coworkers, a, a big wig that worked for Amico. Uh, this guy was a higher up and he had drawn an elk tag for that area and. So my dad explained to me that I'd be taking this guy up to, to get him an elk. He hadn't had much luck, and it was it was getting on towards the end of season. So I took this guy up. He met me at my house. I took him up uh, within within about three hours of, of leaving my house. I had him in the elk, and he ended up shooting a really really nice six by six bull. Um, I didn't put a tape on it, uh, as with most animals that that are killed in my company. I I don't. First thing I do is not stretch out the tape. I don't I don't do that. Um, I can tell you that uh, this particular bull was, was probably a 350 class bull. Um, he wasn't much bigger than that, but he was every bit of 350. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's not a superstition, it's not anything really, uh, any, anything bigger than, than what it is. I just, I want to make sure that, that my hunter, my client, is happy with, with what they got. And it's rare, it is very rare that I get a hunting client that comes out and says, by golly, I want to shoot 185 inch deer or nothing. No, they come out here, they want a great experience. They want to go home with, with a, a quality deer, they want to go home with some quality memories, and, and they want to go home with a sense of fulfillment that, that's provided by a, a western hunting experience. That's what I provide to my people. That's what I'm wanting to provide to you. Um, can I tell you that after you watch these videos, you can come out to to Wyoming and, and whack a 190 inch mule deer? No, that's not what this is about. So if that's what you're looking to do, then you probably ought to be watching a different blog. I don't know what that one's called. Maybe it's called whackamonster.com. I don't know, but maybe you can go out and buy that domain name if somebody already has it, whackamonster.com. Um, anyway, uh, so that, that's not what this is about. That's This is not meant for, for everybody watching to come out here and, and zonk a great big giant buck on their first day. This is how to come out and enjoy your western hunting experience in Wyoming and 
do it with as little bit of that gin coming out of your pocket as you can. Because I, I totally realize that, that not everybody has the means to, to come out and, and pay for a fully guided hunt. Even those people who, who have the money don't necessarily want to. So we've already established that. So I'm assuming that since you're still watching episode two, that you're, you're one of those people who just want to come out and uh, keep the most of the money in your pocket as you can and enjoy a, a Western hunting experience. Uh, probably my favorite species in the state of Wyoming to hunt is, is mule deer. I love hunting mule deer. That, that really trips my trigger. And it's because they're so smart, they're so wary, they're, they're intelligent animals, and not everybody can do it. Uh, however, with a little bit of know-how, a little bit of the knowledge I share, you can come out and drastically increase your odds on how to do this. Um, step number one is you decide, hey, I want to come out and hunt mule deer. Uh, step number two is where do you want to hunt mule deer in the state of Wyoming? Uh, now, there are great, great giant uh, mule deer over on the west side of the state, up in the Wind Rivers, up in the, up in the Absorcas and the Wyoming Range. Um, those are the ones that you see the videos uh, where the guys are all dressed up in the white suits and they're sneaking up on deer. And these deer are just gargantuan. Um, they give them they give them names like like Behemoth and Brutus and Octavius and you know they give them all these names and these things are just awesome specimens. Uh, but the thing they don't always share in, in these videos or these pictures and, and whatnot is 